This is Trace and Trust, a short series on media authenticity infrastructure. What it is, why we need it, and what could go wrong. In this video, we talk about the growth of deepfakes and some of the proposed responses to them. If you've been following technology news recently, you might have heard of deepfakes. These are videos that use sophisticated artificial intelligence techniques to generate realistic looking scenes that are completely fake like Barack Obama making a childish criticism of Donald Trump, or British Prime Minister Boris Johnson seeming to endorse his political opponent. Right now, deepfakes are an emerging technology, and it takes a lot of time, skill, and computer processing power to make anything that looks convincing. Many deepfakes can be spotted by slowing a video down to look for irregularities, while experts can use computer software to detect signs of algorithmic manipulation. There are two big problems when it comes to detecting deepfakes. The first is that when videos are shared on social media, the files are compressed in a way that erases many signs of manipulation and removes metadata that can be useful for verifying content. And the second is that deepfake technology keeps improving, which suggests we'll reach a time in the not too distant future when neither humans nor algorithms can tell that a piece of media has been faked. That's why software companies, news organizations, and social media platforms are increasingly interested in building tools for content authentication, a new way of signaling which images and videos we can trust. The idea behind content authentication is that if we can't reliably detect when a piece of media has been tampered with, then we should use additional safeguards to prove that genuine media hasn't been faked. This is harder than it sounds in a digital media ecosystem because there are so many steps between a photograph or video being shot and the content arriving on the screen of your phone or laptop. Some apps like ProofMode, TruePic, or Serilay record additional data when media is being captured. This data is then either stored on the device, sent to a server in the cloud, or shared with trusted partners. The end goal is to confirm with certainty that a photo is unedited and was taken at a certain time and place. But not all edits to media are deceptive. It's common for still images and video to be cropped, resized, color corrected, or otherwise tweaked in ways that don't change the underlying truth. Creative toolmaker Adobe is one of the companies working on another kind of content authentication, a system for tracking edits to a piece of media as it's passed around the internet so that anyone can see how it has changed over time. Finally, some news organizations like the New York Times are working on standards for provenance. This means tracing the path that a piece of media content takes from capture to publication to distribution, sort of like a farm-to-table standard for photojournalism where the end consumer can see how a certain image reached them. All of these approaches could help modern media consumers be more sure that they're not seeing fake images or videos, so there's a push to build this content authenticity infrastructure into the modern web. But there are drawbacks too. These systems might not work on all devices, and we could unintentionally devalue the work of video activists or citizen journalists who aren't using specialized apps and software. They could also compromise our privacy and increase government surveillance, or make it harder for whistleblowers to stay anonymous. In part two of the series, I'll be talking about user-generated content, where we put the burden of proof, and what that might mean in the future.